What's going on guys, Billy here, and the Matrice 30 is DJI's new mid-tier enterprise level drone. In my first thoughts video, I called this a Frankenstein looking drone because that's really what it is. It resembles an M300, but has a lot of the same design characteristics as say a Mavic drone. I previously showed this comparison of DJI's current enterprise lineup, and you can tell that the M30's design was largely inspired by the M300, but it seems that DJI went to the drawing board and thought, how can we make this smaller and more portable? Ultimately, the way that they were able to achieve this was by taking the payload and rather than mounting it underneath of the drone, they put it on the front of the drone, much like a Mavic 3, a Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, or any of those smaller foldable drones. Taking that a step further, they then revamped the folding arms by also making them the landing gear. This allowed them to cut out the extra pieces required with the M300. They then made the body smaller, and here we have a more compact drone in the M30. But what is really impressive is that DJI was able to retain a lot of the great features that that made the M300 special here in the M30. Now to touch on some general things to know about the Matrice 30, it weighs a mere 3,770 grams, it's IP55 waterproof, it has a flight time of 41 minutes with a dual battery system rated at 5,880 milliamp hours a piece, it has a top speed of 51 miles an hour, it has a wind resistance rating of up to 34 miles per hour, and like the M300, uses OcuSync 3 Enterprise as its transmission system for a flawless flight experience with very little lag or breakup. So now we've covered some general things to know about the M30 here. What I want to do is go in depth and take a walk around of this entire drone to help you familiarize yourself with the M30 both inside and out. So starting at the end of each arm, the M30 has four total antennas. On the front arms are the traditional directional antennas that are hidden inside of the landing feet, as I'll call them. On the back are the two DRTK antennas. They're the cylindrical looking pieces that sit on top of the arms. I also want to point out that these back propellers are underslung, while the front propellers are mounted in a traditional way on top of the arm, which in the grand scheme of things really doesn't matter, but it's just a cool design element that I figured I'd point out. Now these arms, of course, fold out from the body and are made of carbon and fiber. The locking mechanism sits just on the inside of each arm here, so you can feel confident that they will stay in place without budging while flying in the air. When you're ready to pack up the drone, all you have to do is push down on these locking points and the legs will collapse easily inwards. Now the rest of the body of the M30, so the middle section here minus the arms, is really resembling of the M300, but of course it's smaller and because of that, DJI had to change some things up. So up here on the top side of the drone is four screw mounting points for accessories to be added on later, like the speaker and spotlight attachment that DJI has teased in a couple of videos. Moving back, there's a light beacon for spotting the drone in low light scenarios, two USB-C ports for updating firmware and connecting to those third party accessories, which are each covered by flaps to keep rain and debris out. The power button is here in the center. And then at the back, we have a collection of four obstacle avoidance sensors, two of which are infrared sensors and the other two are traditional visual obstacle avoidance sensors. Moving on to the sides of the drone, we'll also find a set of four total sensors on each of these sides. So two infrared infrared and two vision cameras, which help create a big bubble around the drone for true omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. The one thing that I wanted to mention is that on the left side here, there is a small flap for a micro SD card to save your photos and videos taken while flying. On the back side, we also have a set of those four obstacle avoidance sensors per usual, while the rest of the space is taken up by the dual battery slot. So we do have two separate batteries on this drone, which is great for redundancy. So if one fails, you've got a second battery that will allow you to get the drone back and land safely. It's also great for fast operation, so you can hot swap the batteries without having to power off the drone. This keeps the camera ready, the GPS and satellites locked, and helps with minimal downtime in between flights. To take these batteries out, you'll use the respective orange clips on either side. Now flipping underneath, we have a real tight group of sensors right in the center of the drone, which is necessary because the camera is taking up a considerable amount of space. Right in the middle is our dual infrared sensors that are then straddled by our dual vision sensors. Just below this are three sets of lights. The one in the center is another light beacon to aid with seeing the drone in the air at nighttime. So there's one on the top and bottom for easy viewing, no matter which direction you fly. There's also two downward facing auxiliary lights that flood the area with light to help the M30 see the ground when landing in low light scenarios. This is to ensure that the drone doesn't smack into the ground when landing, and it also helps with general visibility at nighttime. The larger M300 actually had a set of these lights on top as well, but with a larger drone body like that, there's more room to add extra components like lights. Now, because it might be hard to tell, I want to point out the landing points because this drone ditches the big external landing gear that the M300 had. While on the ground, the drone primarily sits on the two front legs on each arms, which remember double as antennas, and then it rests 
rests on these two support areas underneath, all of which have a rubber finish to mitigate any slipping during takeoff or landing. Now, the final side that we have to take a look at here is the front, which of course has the same four sensors as all of the other sides, but it also has an FPV camera that can be used to help navigate the drone, whether you're flying alone and want a wide look at the front of the drone, or if you're the pilot in command and want to give your secondary pilot who's controlling the camera full control of the gimbal, you can then use this camera, the FPV camera, to see what's in front of the drone while you're flying. Now, the final thing that is, of course, of major importance is that camera itself, which sits here on the front like a Mavic drone. But because this camera is so important, I'm going to be going more in depth in a future video on this camera alone. So be sure to check out my Matrice 30 playlist in the description if you want to learn more about what it can do and see some examples. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There's also an internal gimbal lock if you just move the camera upwards. This will keep the gimbal locked in place when you transport the drone in its case. So much like the larger M300, the smaller M30 still features 24 total obstacle avoidance sensors, four on each side, 12 of which are the infrared sensors and 12 of which are the traditional obstacle avoidance cameras. Now, when flying forwards, the drone is able to detect obstacles up to 125 feet away and in every other direction, up, left, right, down, backwards, the drone is able to see obstacles up to 108 feet away. So you can think of this omnidirectional obstacle avoidance system as a big bubble around the drone that can see obstacles up to 100 feet away. Now, just as a quick tip, this is further displayed at the bottom of the Pilot 2 application as a radar. So you can fly the drone close to objects and it will display what is detected there for you to visualize what the drone is seeing and what the environment around the drone looks like. Just as a side note, I'm kind of surprised that DJI didn't use the newer optical avoidance sensors that we find here on the Mavic 3 in the M30. These new sensors that were first featured on the newest Mavic are a massive step forward as the better hardware just allows the software to better detect and avoid obstacles. They have big glass lenses with a larger field of view, while these sensors found in the M30 are the older hardware style found on basically every other drone before its release, from the Phantom to the Mavic 2 to the M300. I guess I'll overlook this though because there's literally 24 of these sensors that do a great job of helping you keep your drone safe in the air. Now, as we wrap up our discussion on the obstacle avoidance sensors, this kind of brings us into our section on general safety. And much like DJI's Matrice 300, the Matrice 30 here is one of the safest drones that you can fly. So not only do these drones look alike, but they share the same safety features. For both the M30 and M300, DJI has published a three page PDF that goes over these safety features and general redundancy in depth. So if you want to read everything it has to say, I'll leave a link to it down below. But for the sake of this video, I want to trim that down and go over the most important information. So up on the screen, I have 15 different bullet points that were pulled from that safety PDF that I just mentioned. So these are 15 of the safety features and the redundancy features that are built into the Matrice 30 here. So we've got dual IMUs, we've got dual barometers, dual RTK and dual directional antenna. So the four antenna system, and we have dual compasses. So we basically have a backup or redundant option for every flight critical piece of hardware on this drone from the internal sensor like the IMU, the gyroscope, and the barometer, as well as uh, the antennas on the outside and the compass on the inside. So if anything fails on this drone, you've got a backup to then allow yourself to get the drone back and land it safely. Now, we also have the six pairs of vision sensors and the six pairs of infrared sensors. We've already mentioned that to death here, the 24 different sensors around the drone, which really do help make sure that this drone doesn't crash while in the air. And you've got a lot of them, so there's a lot of redundancy there built in. We also have control signal redundancy, the dual intelligent batteries in the front that are self-heating, and we also have a dual transmission link from here. So we can use two different remote controllers on the same drone, which is great for a dual pilot operation. So one person can fly the drone, the other person can control the camera. But if one of those controllers, say, goes dead or stops working, you then have that backup controller to use to connect to the drone and fly it safely back. Now, if anything were to happen with that connection from the remote controller to the drone, of course, return to home would be engaged. This drone has returned to home built in. So once you set your home point, once the drone takes off, if you then have your remote controller die during the flight, or if there's some sort of issue with the connection, the drone will automatically return to home by itself, use the sensors to avoid obstacles on its way back. So it's smart in that way. But having those two controllers connected to the same drone gives you a higher level of redundancy, which redundancy and safety is like the theme of not only this drone, but the M300. Now also worth mentioning, you do have a 4G connection enabled here with this drone, but here in the United States, it currently is not available 
available as the FAA does not allow uh, flights that are conducted outside of your visual line of sight. So just know that there is a 4G option, but it currently isn't available here in the States. Now, moving on from there, this is probably my favorite thing. It is the three propeller emergency landing. So if this drone loses a propeller or loses a motor, it can go into a controlled downward spiral and land safely on the ground. So that doesn't damage the drone itself. And it also doesn't damage any buddy or any property on the ground. I'm going to put a link to the M300 doing one of these three propeller controlled landings down in the description. So you can go ahead and check that out. It really is something interesting to see. Now, a couple of things we've already mentioned here. It of course has the uh, wide angle FPV camera on the front, which is a great level of redundancy. So if something happens to your camera on the front down here that you're using to shoot photos and videos with, but also see as you fly around, you can switch over to the FPV camera and safely get your drone back. There's also an ADS-B receiver inside of the drone so that you can pick up signals from manned aircraft. The drone will tell you directly in the Pilot2 app where those aircraft are. It gives you a lot more safety in the air and not listed in that safety PDF, but I figured I'd mention the drone is IP55 waterproof and it also has the fleet health management system to be able to look through your drone and the sensors before you fly to make sure that everything is operating properly. Now at this point, this is where I would typically break away from the drone and touch on the remote controller, but I actually already made a separate video on the RC Plus here. So if you want to check that video out, I'll put a link in the top right corner. And of course, you can find it in the playlist linked below. Just as a quick note though, this controller is overall badass and really adds to the flight experience with this drone. There are so many custom buttons and switches that really allow you to take advantage of the features that this drone has to offer. Now with any new enterprise level drone from DJI, they always like to include some really cool software features built in, a lot of which we've actually already seen in like the M300, but they've trickled down here to the M30. And I think it's definitely worth taking a look at some of the things that this drone is capable of. For example, Active Track and Spotlight are intelligent flight features that have been found in DJI's drones for years. They use camera-based tracking to keep the camera focused on a selected subject, making the filming process easier. You don't have to worry about camera movement. The drone does all the work for you. In a similar regard, with the M30, the Smart Track function allows you to select a subject for the camera to focus on and track. Notice how it analyzes the scene for potential subjects that you might want to select by placing small dots over them. Simply pressing on one of these will snap the camera onto the subject, thus enabling Smart Track. From here, the zoom camera keeps the drone trained on the subject by automatically adjusting the zoom, gimbal pitch, and rotation of the entire aircraft so that you don't have to worry about the drone crashing. It completes all of its movements from a stationary position. Taking this feature to the next level though is the laser rangefinder that is also constantly determining the position of the subject that you are looking at. It then displays this information in real time on the map through a green crosshair. Also making use of the laser rangefinder, you can set points through DJI's pinpoint feature that display through augmented reality icons within the Pilot2 app just like the home point does as you're flying around. These points are also marked on your map within the application. This is helpful for remembering certain locations for inspections, but is also helpful for sending key information back to your team through Flight Hub. The rest of the intelligent flight features deal with the realm of autonomy, so giving the drone commands and then letting it do the rest of the work. These features include live mission recording, Waypoints 2.0, and AI spot check. Live mission recording and Waypoints 2.0 really takes a lot of the repeated, tedious flying out of inspection work with drones. If you're actively inspecting the same towers, the same buildings, the same roofs, or just the same general areas, taking the time to save a Waypoint mission for that specific project will make all of your future visits a lot easier and it will ensure that you capture consistent images and data every single time. Both of these modes can be found within the mission flight section of the Pilot2 application and the interface is both powerful and easy to read. It totally blows the customization that the DJI Go app gave with drones like the Phantom 4 and Mavic 2 out of the water as you get full control over what the drone is doing at every second during its flight. Now let's briefly discuss the charging situation here because this drone doesn't just come with like a power brick uh, that plugs into each battery individually, but instead it comes with a charging case. Now, when we looked at the M300's charging case, you're actually able to store the batteries and charge the batteries inside of the case, but because of the design and how small this case is, it pretty much only acts as an actual charger or like a charging hub. So within here, we can fit up to eight of the TB30 batteries and we can fit two of the Crystal Sky Sendence Controller remote controller batteries. So I think the charging case idea is really great. It makes it nice and portable. I mean, you wouldn't even be able to tell that this was a charger. Sure, I wish I could actually store the batteries in here, but could you imagine lugging around eight batteries inside of a charging case? That would be 
brutally heavy. Now this case does also have a couple of cool charging features built in. So first of all, the charging speed is just outrageous. To charge two TV30 batteries at once from 20% to 90%, it only takes 30 minutes. That is incredibly fast. If you instead were gonna charge from a a totally empty 0% to a full 100%, it would take up to 50 minutes to charge two batteries at once, but that's still pretty fast. Now there's also a couple of different charging modes. So there's a storage mode that allows you to charge each of the batteries to 50% to kind of be stored at a lower voltage and a lower capacity. So they're not always fully charged. So if you're gonna be storing the drone for a longer period of time, it's probably smart to use that. You could also just have the uh, charging hub charge your batteries up to 90% and then move on to the next set of batteries, or you can have them charge to a full 100% and then move to the next set of batteries. So it depends on what you're going to be using this, this drone for or charging for. So if you're out in the field, you might want the batteries to charge as fast as possible to 90% and then move on to the next set so that you have two fresh batteries ready to go at 90%. From there, guys, I think that we've pretty much covered everything there's to know about the M30. This is one of my favorite drones of all time, not even just enterprise level, and that's because I think that it offers a lot of great technology and such a small portable form factor. Like, this drone right here is really pushing the industry forward and breaking a lot of barriers. I mean, I never thought that I'd see a folding M300 style drone. It really is cool. Now, make sure you stay tuned because we will have some more videos coming out on the M30 here. And our next video is going to be covering that camera in depth, which is something I'm definitely excited for. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below about the M30. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.